Good evening, everyone, and welcome. We thank you for coming out tonight on such a blustery evening to find out more about the Cambridge program. We're very excited about Cambridge and Putnam County, and we hope that you leave here with all of the information that you need to make the decision that is best for your student. Um, on the way in, you received a sticky note and a pencil, and if you have any questions throughout the evening, please feel free to jot that question down and either give that to one of the students as they make their way around towards the end, or if you don't have an opportunity to see one of them, if you could stick your sticky note on any of the signs that are on the outside of the auditorium, uh, we will email you. If you'll put your email address on the sticky note as well as your question, we will email you with um, a response to your questions because we want to make sure everyone has all the information that they need. I'd like to begin the evening by introducing some very special guests, some of our uh, most prized students up here. They do a fantastic job in the classrooms every day and being role models for all of our students in Putnam County. So we are going to begin by introducing them. I would like to introduce Miss Risa Krause. Just wave. You could just wave. Miss <laughs> Janaya Gilliard. Miss <laughs> Tatum Wilhite. Miss Allison, Miss Allison Eubanks, Miss Ruby Duran, Shania McKinnon, Colby Michael, Garrett Holly, Wesley Bailey. I was giving Garrett his moment of fame there. I know he likes that. Javen <coughs> Milton, Brandon Stauver. Kayla Stanton, Lanaya Lee, Andrea McDaniel, Andy Nelson, and Owen Meeks. Some of the students on the end may look familiar to some students out there because these members of the Travel and Tourism class planned the 6th and 8th grade tours that took place last week out at QI. So we've had a few students visiting your schools and we've welcomed the sixth and eighth grade to come out and take a tour of QI and we've really enjoyed that experience. So without any further ado, I would like to turn the microphone over to our wonderful superintendent, Ms. Phyllis Criswell. She'd like to speak a few words to you this evening. Thank you for waiting for me to get up here. We felt it was very important that your students sit up here and you look at them and see these wonderful students we have in this program. I just wanted for you parents that may not know, when I was elected to this office a couple of years ago, I knew that I had lots of parents saying to me, my children are not challenged and I really want them to have to work hard. And I appreciated that, I understood that after having raised my own two daughters in the school system. And I felt like we needed to find the proper program for Putnam County students, something that would challenge them, but could also in turn help the parents. And that's what this program does. When you look across the state of Florida, there are two programs that are used throughout all of the schools in the state of Florida, I say all in all of the high schools, and that is the Cambridge program or the IB program, International Baccalaureate. Those are the two programs that are used for students who are academically successful. They both cost money. I knew we didn't have enough students in Putnam County to need both programs, and after looking at these programs, we decided that Cambridge is best for us because those students who complete the 9 through 12 grades of the program can earn the Bright Future Scholarship. And that comes free and that helps parents because then college is paid for. And as expensive as it is today, that's the best way to go for our students and for the parents. So what I did was actually talk to Dr. Coleman and also to Laura France, our Director of Elementary Ed, who's sitting over here. I also have with me tonight Helen Muir, who is the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. And with their help, and Dr. Coleman, who had had experience with Cambridge in Duval County, they put together a most wonderful program. This program for our academically talented and successful students 
and isn't necessarily for everybody. Every child in Putnam County that could qualify for this program may not choose it. But we had an obligation to the children of Putnam County to offer such a program so that the students and the parents would have a choice. And those of you who have chosen this program, I think, are extremely happy with it. And those of you tonight that are here to, to find out about it, when you hear the stories from these students, I think you'll want it for your children, too. Uh, this program has been very successful and will continue to be. When we started the program, I knew that I didn't want it just to be a 9th through 12th grade program. I wanted it to be K through 12. So what we had to do was get with Cambridge, and they come and they look at our district and they talk to us about where we can put the program, and we have to follow their rules and their protocol. We also have to pay for the program to be used in our schools. So we had to look at the expense and determine where we could afford to have the program and then grow the program as parents became interested and students became interested. So we have expanded it again this year and certainly uh, we have moved towards our K through 12. We're not to 12th grade yet, but we will be soon. So what you're gonna hear tonight is stories from our students about their uh, experiences in the program and what they're learning and believe me they are working very hard academically but they're also having a lot of fun and they're doing a lot of different kinds of things and I'm gonna let them tell you about it but I think uh, Dr. Coleman also got a grant from Lowe's and they were able to do some things like picnic tables and uh, some upgrading of um, plants and some things at the school, so that was exciting. They do a lot of different kinds of things in this program, not just academics, but academics is the greatest, the largest piece of this, and it is for their future success. That's what we wanted. So um, I could stand up here and talk all night about it because I'm very pleased with how it has progressed and very excited about uh, what we have been able to accomplish and what these young adults are accomplishing. Uh, at QI Roberts Junior Senior High School, so I'm going to let them tell you their stories. And thank you very much, Dr. Coleman, Jenna, for, for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. And certainly if you have any questions that they can't answer, I don't think there will be, but I am available also. I will be sneaking out. I have two other events tonight, but certainly you can email me or come and see me at my office if you have questions. And thank you so much for being out here tonight in this very cold weather. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Criswell. I'd also like to introduce some other important guests that we have this evening, uh, the administrators of the Cambridge Schools here in Putnam County. We have Ms. Beth Nelson, who is the principal out at Interlochen Elementary School. <laughs> Ms. Paula Adams, the assistant principal at James A. Long Elementary. <laughs> Ms. Sarah Jean McDaniel, the principal at James A. Long Elementary. Ms. Tanya Whitehurst, the principal at C.L. Overturf Junior 6th Grade Center. Mr. Mike Tucker, the assistant principal at C.L. Overturf Junior 6th Grade Center. And again, Ms. Helen Muir is here and Ms. Laura France. And, and I, Mr. Helms. Oh, and Mr. Sorry, there you are. Mr. Brian Helms, our assistant principal at QI Roberts Junior Senior High School. <laughs> Dr. Coleman, our principal at Junior Senior. QI Roberts Junior Senior High School. Miss <laughs> Weeks is one of our ACE um, International History instructors out at QI. Miss Susan Collins, our guidance counselor. And Miss Kristen Carroll, our CRT. And Michelle Michael. And I believe Miss Michelle Michael is out there as well. She is the Cambridge coordinator at James A. Long Elementary. And Miss Melissa Hibbs is the Cambridge coordinator at C.L. Overture Junior Sixth Grade Center. So welcome everyone. I think Miss, sorry, one more, Miss Flake out at Interlochen Elementary. So welcome again, all of you, and thank you for coming out. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Coleman to speak with you a little bit about the Cambridge program itself. Welcome. I am very impressed with your dedication coming out in this weather. We chose a wonderful day for this. Um, real quick, I wanted to start out uh, with our discussion today 
uh, talking about some misconceptions. We are currently in our second year of the program, uh, going into our third year of the program, uh, but it's, it's a bit new for us in Putnam County. And so I wanted to talk about what it is and what it's not, and we'll share a bit about the history of the program and get to uh, look at some videos of our students in action in the program. Uh, what it's not, it's not a charter program. It's not a new program. Uh, as the superintendent mentioned, uh, all school districts in Florida have either the Cambridge program or the International Baccalaureate program as their acceleration mechanism for their gifted and talented students. Uh, bigger school districts such as Miami-Dade or Duval County have, you know, where you have greater than 20 high schools, have room for both programs in the school district. Uh, with the size of our school district, we chose to go with the Cambridge program because of the flexibility of the program, the research basis of the program, and the benefits that it gives students after graduation from high school. Again, it is a program uh, that is recognized by colleges and universities, and we'll talk a bit later uh, about how, by state law, all colleges and universities in Florida have to give equivalent college credit to every Cambridge course. Uh, and you can look that up on the Cambridge website as a parent uh, if you're interested in what course the students get college credit for at the university level. But all of that is guaranteed in state law by the state of Florida. As we mentioned, Florida considers uh, acceleration programs in the state of Florida at the advanced level to be Cambridge and International Baccalaureate. And so those programs, when students graduate from our high schools, those programs are considered to be the most rigorous programs for students for the purpose of college admissions. And so they're going to look at those students with first priority that have been part of an academic magnet program. It's validated internationally and certainly competitive uh, in terms of student admission at schools across the United States. What is Cambridge? The Cambridge program is an advanced academic program. It was founded by the University of Cambridge in England, and it was founded as an international program uh, as part of a movement to standardize the level of rigor internationally among countries. Uh, and you may have uh, looked at some of the studies comparing the performance of students in the United States to that of students in other countries. The Cambridge program because it is internationally formed and internationally normed, uh, is, is uh, a very important step towards ensuring that our students are competitive, not only within Florida, not only within the United States, but that they are receiving classes and coursework and assessments and credit that is going to be competitive at the international level. All of that is normed internationally with students uh, who meet qualifications in other countries as well. Uh, just as a quick graphic, all of the areas uh, that are designated up here have Cambridge programs. Uh, students, there's two plus million exams administered internationally. It's in 9,000 schools. You can look at the number of countries over there, the number of governments over there, and so it's certainly an international program. Is Cambridge new to Florida? Uh, as our superintendent mentioned, all of the school districts around us have either the International Baccalaureate Program or the Cambridge Program um, at their school district. And that is so that students in that particular school district can receive academic courses that are really geared towards gifted and talented students that are able to perform above grade level at their grade level. One of the most wonderful parts of the Cambridge program is the quality of instruction that the students um, receive and the type of learner that we are fostering with this program. The learners in this program with the goals of Cambridge are learners who are confident in the things that they do. They're able to speak to the standards that they've mastered with confidence and knowing that they have really 
had a full grasp on the information that they've been presented. They're responsible students. With that responsibility, they get privileges. And if students have an idea that they would like to run with, if they want to have a dance, or if they want to organize an event to support breast cancer, or if they have something they would like to organize and plan for the school, we allow them to have that opportunity because they've proven themselves responsible students who are capable of handling um, those type of activities. And it's just been a phenomenal opportunity to see them take an event and, and plan the whole thing from beginning to end. And not only with a major event, but just with their classroom projects and um, some of the things, the lab work they've done in class, it's just amazing to watch them um, take place in the school. Uh, they're reflective. They're required to not only talk about the answer, but how did they get that answer? Are they sure that's the right answer? Discuss that with your partner. What do you think about what your partner said? They really need to reflect on the standards that they've mastered so that they can make sure they take that knowledge and move forward in life, not just memorize it for an exam and then it's over. Also, they're innovative. We don't want cookie cutter um, answers from everyone having the same type of answer. We want our students to be creative in their thinking and innovative in their ideas so that they can be competitive when they go to college because we are looking for um, a future. Uh, 20 years ago, we didn't even have some of the things that we have now, and that all comes with innovation and creativity. So we definitely want to foster that in our students as well. Um, also, students that are engaged. In order for a student to gain that knowledge that they need in the classroom, they have to be engaged. And as educators, it is our responsibility to provide lessons to them that provide that engagement for them, whether it is um, through different hands-on experiences or auditory presentations or visual presentations. We have to meet the needs of the individual students that we are given. Teachers, again, these, these teachers tend to be a little, uh, a little different. <laughs> If it's spirit week, they're going to dress up. If it is uh, kiss a pig, they're going to get their lips ready. They masquerade ball. We have, uh, I believe that's a bear horse or something. <laughs> Again, <laughs> teachers with snakes. We have teachers with salamanders and creepy crawly critters and all kinds of exciting things. But all of these teachers, you can bet, are 100% committed and dedicated to making sure our students are prepared to succeed not only in college and in school, but in life, and they're learning some great life lessons and also having a little bit of fun in the process. Okay, so to look at our progression, as the superintendent mentioned, there is a long process in becoming an approved Cambridge school district and in becoming an approved Cambridge school. And so what we did as a school district is we started out with one kindergarten through 12th grade path during our first year. And we did an application uh, and had to get our teachers approved that were part of the program. Um, all of our teachers go through a rigorous screening process uh, so that we can ensure that your students have the best possible teachers in Putnam County in their classrooms. And teachers that are uh, willing to get trained through Cambridge are really innovative individuals and put their heart and soul into their work uh, with uh, our gifted and talented students in the school district. Uh, and so we started our um, program at James A. Long for kindergarten through fifth grade. Uh, and uh, moved to CL Overturf for our sixth grade center, and then moved to QI during our first year. If you can go back to the previous slide, thanks. Um, during our first year, um, this being our second year, we went ahead and applied for Interlock in elementary school to have a kindergarten through fifth grade program and went through the application process. Now, not all schools get approved by Cambridge to be sites. Uh, we have been very fortunate in our school district that our district was approved and all of our schools that we've applied for have been approved. Uh, but it has been a long process where we've had to demonstrate uh, academic excellence as a school district uh, in order to use their program. Um, so future years, we're going to look at data from Crescent City and look and see where we are uh, in terms of student achievement data, numbers of students data to look at um, possibilities in Crescent City. Um, so it's been a progression through our school district because uh, there is an application process that we have to go through uh, that is rigorous to, in order to offer the program.
our goal is certainly to offer the experience to students throughout our school district. Uh, requirements for admissions. Uh, if you need an application, we do have, I know we mailed some out, uh, but we did bring some applications for you if you need an extra one. Um, they're out in the lobby. Um, we also did bring some brochures if you need it that are out in the lobby that do have the requirements for admission on there. Uh, we will contact the kindergarten students that apply to our school district for kindergarten and ask them to sit for an assessment. Uh, it is a no pressure assessment. I know sometimes there's anxiety out there saying, I don't know if I want my four-year-old to come and sit for an assessment for Cambridge. Um, so I promise it's, uh, I have a child that will be in there, so it'll, it'll be okay. <laughs> um, but they come in a no-pressure zone, and we give them um, their own uh, readiness for kindergarten assessment. Uh, and so we will go through and test them. Um, for uh, first through third grade, um, we uh, pull assessment data that they have in reading and math through iReady. Uh, we'll pull prior year FCAT data for the students that were in a grade level that took FCAT. Uh, and uh, students in the school district, we will go ahead and pull their data. Uh, so if your student is applying and they are within our school district, you don't need to give us data. We'll just go ahead and pull their data. We'll pull their prior year report card. Uh, and so I say this to the students out there in the audience, particularly our middle school and high school students. If you have makeup work, please do it now. These ones up here know, know my, know my uh, epistle, right? Um, if you have makeup work, do it now, because we will pull your report card and we'll look and see if you turn in your homework generally or not. Um, and we'll pull discipline history. We do want to make sure uh, that this is an environment where teachers can truly accelerate students, and so that discipline history is very important to us, uh, along with attendance. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pull all of that data for your student. If you are applying to the program and you are currently at uh, a private school, if you're sitting at Penile, if you are um, in a homeschool program, uh, we just ask that those parents bring the data that they have for their student, and we can compare that to nationally normed data um, to get an idea in terms of um, analogous data for our students uh, and where your student uh, may fall. So what are the benefits of the Cambridge program? Well, as Ms. Criswell alluded to earlier, one of the main benefits is that opportunity for the Florida Academic Scholars Bright Future Scholarship. With the completion of the Cambridge Diploma, students are guaranteed that scholarship, the highest level that the Florida Bright Future Scholarship awards. And that means they are eligible for that regardless of their test score. They don't have to reach that minimum of the ACT or SAT score and as well as their GPA. So that is, that is one of the primary benefits. But far beyond the scholarships and the test scores, the benefits of Cambridge are the experience that the students get in the classroom, interacting with their peers, uh, doing things that they never knew they were going to be able to do, uh, creating challenges for themselves and their classmates, and being able to work together to meet those challenges. Um, also, they're project-based and student-focused lessons. And so again, the lessons are designed around their interests and designed around their modality of learning. So the teachers like to have them uh, be interactive with the choices of the topics that they're studying. For instance, in some of our um, high school level courses, yes, they have homework. I know everyone has that dreaded, oh my gosh, how much homework are they gonna have? We're gonna be up for 10 hours a night doing homework. Um, the homework is designed to be effective for them to master the standards. And by that, I mean whatever way they feel necessary to show that they have mastered that content, they have flexibility in the way they present that. If they need to read a, his, a history chapter and come back the following week with that information, it doesn't have to necessarily be a five-paragraph essay discussing the Civil War. It can be, I may dress up like a Civil War character. I may draw a political cartoon about the Civil War. I may do a PowerPoint, bring in an artifact, um, interview one of my grandparents who has an ancestor that was in the war, that type of thing. So we like to give them the flexibility in the way they present the information. Also, 
they are able to receive college credit in high school and able to receive high school credit while they're still in middle school. So those are some of the, the main benefits that we offer with the Cambridge program. When we get to Cambridge Advanced Studies, we're out at QI Roberts Junior Senior High School, and these students are able to receive college credit for all of their courses. Cambridge is a comprehensive program, and again, that means it's not just one or two courses they can go take comp or they can go take biology. They're able to take college level courses across the board so they get that rigorous curriculum that prepares them for college and their future. Um, even in their electives, with art, they're able to present um, an art portfolio. They send that over to Cambridge and it's, it's graded and they can receive college credit for that as well as music and their other electives. Couple things, uh, parents, for you all to know about the state of Florida. And I understand some of you may have elementary students in the audience, uh, but it's nice to know uh, what kind of program your student is involved in and the benefits uh, at the high school level to, at, with the state. Um, state of Florida lists all Cambridge courses uh, under ACE, the term ACE, um, courses in the Florida Course Code Directory. They're all listed as honors or advanced level courses, and so they receive either a .5 or a one-point GPA bump. Um, for those of you that can remember back to high school, um, in there in the course uh, itself, and so they get that weighted GPA for Cambridge courses um, as awarded by the state of Florida. Uh, also, the state of Florida does recognize Cambridge and International Baccalaureate with an advanced level diploma in Florida. Those are the only two programs that are recognized that way. Um, they consider Cambridge and International Baccalaureate to be the top level programs available for students in the state of Florida. And so they recognize those programs with a uh, Bright Future scholarship at the highest level, regardless of test score, regardless of GPA, uh, that highest level Bright Futures, but also a separate diploma. And that's very important to know because when you're looking at courses for your high school student, uh, you know, many of us, when we were in high school, went through dual enrollment courses uh, because that was really, um, you know, what was available at the time. Uh, and certainly that's a path for students uh, but uh, it's important to know that the state of Florida considers Cambridge and International Baccalaureate to be at the highest level of rigor for students in Florida. And when that is designated on their high school diploma as an advanced level high school diploma with a magnet program, what that means to colleges and universities for admissions purposes is that those students, frankly, are given first priority for admission. Uh, and that's one of the primary reasons that we felt like it was very important to offer this to our students in Putnam County so that our students could be competitive when it came to college admissions. Uh, may not mean a lot to you if your student's going into kindergarten, uh, but it will one day, and it's good to know that, um, that they're on a path um, that is really considered rigorous. Um, on that note, it's very important to us that, um, that our students start as early as possible in the Cambridge program so that they can enjoy the benefits of being accelerated at their grade level. It is very, very powerful, parents, if you're new to the program, to walk in a Cambridge class and see that students are honestly being accelerated. They're not the one student at the table of four students that is helping everybody else because they got finished early. Okay? And I hate to say that, but, but that's sometimes there are some students in that scenario in traditional schools. Um, they're honestly all being challenged in those classes. And that is huge, particularly at the primary school level. Um, those are those formative years when your student has potential, your student may have read early, your student is grasping uh, number sense, and they've got to be accelerated at that level um, to continue on to the path where they can really truly reach their potential as a student. Uh, State of Florida also does exempt students from um, certain graduation requirements that they ask of standard students. Um, so such as PE and performing fine arts, 
um, some of the social studies uh, graduation requirements. Um, so they, they because they, they understand that the rigor of the program is set up a little bit differently for students, uh, they become exempt from certain graduation requirements in Florida uh, with their separate advanced diploma. Bright Futures, we've mentioned a lot um, up here. Um, it's very important to note that, that um, Bright Futures currently, they change the um, test score cutoff every year, and currently students have to have a 29 ACT or 1290 SAT. Uh, for those of you parents that can remember when you, when you took those assessments way back when, uh, that's pretty high. Uh, and that is the requirement for students in the state of Florida for Bright Futures. And so again, Cambridge students do not have any requirement in terms of test scores. If they're sitting at another comprehensive high school, they have to meet these test scores. Our students do not. Now, our students tend to probably meet the test scores, but they don't have the, the added pressure because Florida considers the program itself to be rigorous enough. Also, as I mentioned in, in state law, there, uh, there is law written into uh, how colleges and universities are required to accept Cambridge credits. Um, they're required to accept all of the Cambridge credits as opposed to course by course um, looking at those credits. Um, and uh, all of that is online um, that uh, colleges and universities have to uh, look at in terms of concordant course at the university level. Um, so assessment methods. Again, and we've spoken about this a little bit before. With the assessment methods, it's similar to the way we present lessons in class. We're not just taking a standard paper and pencil test. Yes, they will have some tests that are, that are designed that way, but some of them are going to be performance-based. They may be having a dialogue if they're in a foreign language. If they're doing a Spanish lesson, they may have a dialogue and the teacher would grade them on that. They may have an art project that they're going to turn in or, again, um, dress like an idiom. They may come in and have that as a grade versus a, a paper and pencil test that you would normally see. So those types of varieties of assessment get them used to real life because we don't always have to go and sit down and fill in the blank to answer questions when we're tested in life. Sometimes a situation presents itself and we have to think on our feet and, and react on the spot and make do with what we have. And so teaching those students to do that type of thing. And again, referring back to the travel and tourism class when they did the, the tours, and I see some of them nodding last week, uh, when the sixth graders and eighth graders came out to tour, yes, they had everything planned and it was all planned out. Everything was right in front of them and then life happened. <laughs> and maybe a bus was late or maybe the cafeteria didn't, um, had an issue and we didn't get the, the cafeteria lunches on the bus or something happened and those students had to think on their feet develop a plan and a plan B and a plan Q and try to put something into place in order to make their work successful. And that's what we want to do with um, not only the pre presentation of the lessons, but the assessment as well. Again, with dual enrollment versus um, the Cambridge program, both are very successful ways for students to prepare for college. Both are ways that they can get some of that college level uh, preparation in high school. But some of the main differences with dual enrollment, you tend to choose a couple of courses to go take. For instance, you may go take college algebra or comp. Well, when you go over to University of Florida, go Gators, everybody knows we have to pick UF for the, where you're going to school. When you go over to UF and you sit down with the admissions director and they take a look at your courses, yes, you have that college credit. However, let's take biology, for instance, and you took biology at the dual enrollment, um, at the college for dual enrollment, you may not necessarily get a biology credit at the University of Florida. You would get a science credit, and maybe you would have three hours of science credit, but it, the University of Florida is going to say, okay, that's great, you have your science credit, now we need you to take our biology course. With Cambridge courses, when they pass the exam and they get the college credit, let's do psychology. If it's ACE level Cambridge psychology, they pass that exam, they go to University of Florida, they sit down with the admissions director, congratulations, you have three hours of psychology credit. That's very important to understand the difference in that. If you go onto our website at QI Roberts, 
um, you will see the course equivalencies. There's a link to that. And when you click on that, it will take you to Florida State. There you go, Miss Carol. Get a little floor standing there. Florida State, University of Florida, any of the colleges in Florida or universities, and they will uh, see the course equivalencies. That shows you that it's course for course, what they take and pass the exam, that is the credit that they receive. Um, in addition to that, it's comprehensive. Again, like we said before, they're able to get that college credit at, um, in all of their courses, not just those, um, those core courses. Back to you. Okay, some of the research, and we're gonna go through this really quickly. Um, I know some of y'all have small children out there. Um, but some of the research, and this is important to know because it is a very studied program. Um, the state of Florida has had several research studies across the state that have looked at acceleration mechanisms and compared the success rates of students later on after they participated in a particular program. Uh, Bill Kolb, who's the former director of admissions for University of Florida, uh, did a study, uh, conducted a uh, commission, sort of a study, I guess, so to speak, um, of comparing dual enrollment, advanced placement, Cambridge, and no acceleration. And what he found was at the end of freshman year of college, so after students were already at the University of Florida, the students with the highest GPA at the end of their first year of university were students that came out of the Cambridge program, period. And so what that, what, and that's very important because getting them to two college is one thing, but getting them to finish college is sometimes a different thing. And that's a very important distinction. And so I think this is important for, for you all to know as parents, is that the program enables them to be successful in university work later, not just get there. The benefits of students taking the ACE program before they come to the university is, is really that they're so well prepared. Um, the amount of critical analysis and thinking skills that they develop in the program uh, serves them well when they get to the university campus. We simply looked at three years worth of data of all the ACE students that came to Florida State University and how well they did on their first year GPA and how well they did on their way to graduation. And not surprisingly, uh, they did extremely well. In fact, outperformed all other preparations of all the students we had uh, from the state of Florida. At the University of Washington, we have students who have participated in the ACE Diploma Program. And we know those students have uh, benefited greatly from that program because, not, not simply because of the content, but also because of the, the critical thinking skills they've developed. And that's very valuable for their university career. My definition of a successful student is someone that becomes very engaged when they're at the university. I think in the Cambridge educational system, the students have learned through lots of mechanisms to work together, to look and analyze at different parts of points of view in different parts of a, of a problem. And I think when we get them, we're very impressed that they're able to put all that together to be engaged in our campuses and be very successful. Penn State recognizes the Cambridge qualifications for credit at the university level because we feel that when students have worked in environments, academic environments that are parallel to the university experience, we want to recognize that work and allow them to proceed to the next level at the university. Students who can uh, think about problems in new ways, have a real sense of creativity about the way they think, and just really dive into their subject matter, and uh, these students really do very, very well. And we find a lot of the students who come from the Cambridge curriculum display those qualities. 
my personal definition, and I believe my institution's definition of a successful student is someone who fully engages with the institution, fully engages with our curriculum, fully engages with the opportunities for research in the city that we're in, which is quite uh, vital, uh, and fully engages in the social aspects of institutions so, it gets, so, so that students come out quite worldly and quite understanding of how to interact in the world that we have today. So we want to see students who will fully engage. What I find attractive in what I might call the Cambridge approach is that, first of all, there is content, but there is a primary emphasis on the analysis of the content, on a t putting together content from different disciplines, and maybe most importantly, being expressive about the content, being able to communicate it. Uh, those things all together, in my mind, speak more of the 21st century than the last century. One of the things we look for is a sense when students have completed their secondary school studies of not just having content, mastery of content, but being able to analyze, being able to look at a text critically, being able to make connections between subjects and among them, uh, being able to write effectively. And one of the things that we notice is that Cambridge students, obviously, who have done well, come with those skill sets and we value them and we value them greatly. Okay, and as Ms. Will Height is going over our elective options within the programs, I'm going to ask our students to please come down and pick up our sticky questions so we can address those questions. Please bring them back up. Okay, we've said ACE diploma and Cambridge diploma a couple of times. I'm going to uh, briefly go through how students go about getting that diploma. We'll also uh, put a link on the website so that you can see this PowerPoint and take a look at it a little bit um, closer once you get home, if you'd like to, to take a look and see if you have any further questions. Um, with the ACE Diploma, students have the flexibility of being able to pass exams based on their strengths. So with, uh, with ACE, we have four different areas that students will be taking tests. The first is... Mathematics and science, so if a student, let's say they're very strong in math and maybe they struggle a little in science, they're going to need to, ta to pass an exam from that area. So that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to have to pass biology and chemistry and math. They have to choose from these four areas. They have to pass at least one exam from each of the four categories. The second is languages. We have Spanish language and English language. Next, we have the arts and humanities. So again, they have a wide variety of courses that they'll take and pass exams. And then lastly, we have Group D, Global Perspectives and General Paper. With Global Perspectives, uh, that's what they were talking about on the videos. The ability to not just see the world around us in Palatka and Florida and the United States, but also talk with other students from other countries. What kinds of experiences are they having what are some of the current event type topics that they need to learn how to deal with as the future draws near to them. Some of the electives that are available at QI Roberts Junior Senior High School, we have art and design. And with art and design, again, they can earn the college credit by creating a portfolio to send over to Cambridge for credit. We have Microsoft Office certification, so in addition to having a computer elective, they're able to gain that certification. At the end of their three years in the Microsoft Office courses, they take the certification exam. So upon graduation, they will actually, actually be certified in that. Next up, veterinary assisting. Again, with a three-year course progression, they'll take the certification exam at the end of those three years, and they can graduate high school uh, being certified in veterinary assisting so they could get a job during college and save you a little bit of money for room and board. Music, we have a wonderful music program. They do concerts, symphonic band, jazz band. Food and nutrition, 
students are able to learn about, not only learn about food, but the proper and safe way to prepare it, and again, earn college credit in their ACE food class. And then travel and tourism, which we've spoken quite a bit about, because they're my go-to people for planning events. Beyond the academics, it's yes, it is about academics, and it's about making sure they're prepared for college, but we do have a little bit of fun from time to time as well. Some of the things that we have done this year, we've done some field trips. We went to Physics Day at Bush Gardens. We'll be going to Biology Day in May at Bush Gardens as well. Um, friends, and I've, whenever you look at the, uh, at the video online, I'd like for you to watch this, this one because it's really, I just love it. He plays the guitar. They're sitting outside in the courtyard during lunchtime. The students can go in and eat lunch in the cafeteria, and then they go outside, and some may play the guitar, some may play uh, volleyball. They kick the football around and soccer ball, and they just they really have a good time enjoying one another. And we have a lot of different students, but they all um, have found their place, and they, they enjoy uh, working together to create a, a, just a great culture out at QI. Finding your interest, again, we have, not only do we have the electives, but we have clubs available to them because when you're applying for a college, they're not only going to look at your GPA and at your transcript, but they're going to look at what kind of um, experiences you had. Are you a well-rounded student? Have you had leadership opportunities? So we have clubs. We have, I believe it was 22 the last time we checked. Uh, we have a block schedule, and so on B days, they have 90 minutes, uh, 45 minutes of those uh, of the 90 minutes are for clubs, and they rotate through five different clubs. And of course, fantastic opportunities like going not only to Gainesville, to UF, but also we went to UNF and toured the campus there, and we also toured Flagler College, and there are some beautiful campuses with lots of opportunities for students, whether they're looking for a university with a, with a large population or a small population. We want to expose them to the, the colleges and universities in our area so that they can see what college life is all about and we've really had some great tour guides that have helped with those experiences and fun we have spirit week and masquerade balls and stuff going on at the elementary schools we like to have something um, to keep the kids excited and engaged not only in the classroom but outside of the classroom as well so without any further ado we are going oh actually sorry one more sports if they are in middle school they actually participate in sports at qi roberts junior senior high school and then once they go to high school, if they would like to participate in football, softball, baseball, those type of experiences, they can get on the bus in the afternoon at QI Roberts. It will take them to their home zone school, whether it's Interlochen, Crescent City, or Palatka High, and they participate in sports there. And I'm going to let the students elaborate a little bit more on that because I'm sure there are some questions about sports. We have several student athletes that participate in all three of our high schools in the area. What's next? If you are excited and think that this is the opportunity for you, again, we have applications available to you. You can also access them online. Please submit all of your applications to QI Roberts Junior Senior High School so that we can have them in one spot. Um, expect about a four to six week time period before you receive a letter of acceptance because we want to process all the applications and take a thorough look to make sure that um, that is the right path for the students that have applied. So that is what you need to expect. And we're going to have some questions from our expert panel of lovely young ladies and gentlemen. OK. Um, we did have a question about the application deadline. So the deadline is up here. Um, it is coming soon. We had over 1,000 applications that came in for our Cambridge program last school year. And so I would urge you to please, please, please apply on time if you can. Uh, we did have some disappointed people that applied late. So our first round applications are due February 27th. Uh, we did have some questions about specific uh, GPA expectations. Uh, what we do in a nutshell is we, um, we look up data for, st for students that apply. And um, students are, are, so to speak, rank ordered uh, and um, based upon qualifications. And that's, that's how we form the classes, uh, based upon uh, natural breaks of, of uh, data. Uh, if you'd like to talk to me further about that, I can, I can kind of give you some more information on detail about that. OK, sports. We have some sports questions. Miss Andy, stand up and tell us about sports. 
Wesley, come on. Come on up. Tell us about sports. Andrea, come on. Javen. Um, I'm Andy Nelson, and I go to QI Roberts, but I play sports for IHS. I play volleyball, and they will get you to practice on time, uh, enough for you to change and go to practice. Tell them about the bus. Tell them about the bus, Wesley. There's buses to all the schools or all the high schools that you can play sports at, and they'll try their best to get you there on time for your practice, which I always do. Um, I'm Larry Wesley. Uh, my freshman, freshman year, I played football and baseball for Palatka. <laughs> my name is Wesley. Uh, my freshman year, I played football and baseball, and I, they always bust you there, got you there early, even before the school let out, you were there, so you had plenty of time to change out or do whatever you had to do, and yeah. Um, my name is Javen Milton, and I've, I play soccer for PHS. And usually practice starts at around six, so I get to <laughs> I get to practice on time after school. Yeah, <laughs> and the golf. Yeah. My name's Andrea, and I cheered at Anawaka this year for basketball and football. And practice started at three, so we got there on time, and so they provided transportation, and it's a lot of fun. So. <laughs> Y'all have friends in both places, right? In Crescent City. Mm -hmm. Okay, technology. What types of technology are used to assist with learning in class? What types of technology are used to assist with learning in class? Owen, Owen, come, come answer this question. Lanaya, come on. All right, so technologies. Um, I have an iPad, and I, that's uh, something at Cambridge that we do a lot. Is we take a lot of notes. We, t um, we search on the internet a lot. Actually, one of my uh, chemistry teachers said and actually um, encourages the students to use their phones and whatever to uh, search up more information because he said that we are the best teachers, and that is true. Um, well, I don't know about that. We have some of the greatest teachers here at QI. <laughs> We don't really compare to them, but uh, we're pretty good teachers to ourselves. <laughs> but anyways, so use, uh, use your technology for benefit. Purpose. Yeah, but uh, technology <laughs> is uh, something that is very acceptable in the program, and it's used a lot. Uh, we do have like MacBooks that we used. Um, I was in a uh, design design and tech class last year, and we used uh, something like Photoshop, and we created a bunch of stuff, and we had a uh, an art. Uh, museum thing and it was really cool but technology is uh, something that's very accepted very encouraged at QI and it's also provided a lot and we do invite our students if they'd like to bring their own technology we have the mechanism to do that that's certainly parents choice um, but some of our students choose to bring their technology to school uh, and um, that's certainly welcomed in the classroom uh, my goal as we move forward is for us to eventually become a one-to-one -one technology school. Uh, and so we're currently uh, in the process of working on a number of grants uh, as a school to um, hopefully bring uh, additional one-to-one -one technology into our school. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, our uh, district technology director, has also helped us greatly in terms of uh, working with us in, in the grant venue to bring uh, additional technology to our school. Uh, the reality is that uh, education is going that way, and it's very important to us to teach our students to be self-sufficient. And as they are learning about a topic, to look up additional information on the internet, to do their research, to compare uh, validated sites versus non-validated sites, to look at multiple sources of information, and really become uh, educated uh, self-seekers of information. Janiya, would you speak to your technology in the middle school? Because I know we've talked a lot about what we're doing at QI, but I want you to, like your Animoto, talk about your Animoto projects, like when you do the search mm -hmm. Or any of the other middle school students? Don't Come on, girls, go up together. Go up together. We're here. Rah, rah, rah. Um, my name is Risa Krause, and in our class, we do Animoto. It's like, a, we did a book trailer and a fractured fairy tale. The fractured fairy tale is take a um, fairy tale and you do it from a different 
um, person's point of view in the story, like I did Aladdin from the genie's point of view. In our book trailers, we did a book that we read and turn it into like a movie trailer. And you get to put different pictures and music and different sides on there that you want. It's a really fun experience. It's really fun. And tell them what school you're at. Oh, I'm at CL Overture. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, question here is how do you keep your 7th graders separate from our 12th graders? One of the benefits of us screening for behavior, screening for attendance, screening for academic ability is that um, we tend to, uh, thank goodness so far, um, not have some of the issues that you would have at other schools that are comprehensive schools. Uh, when we just bring academically talented students together that have been screened in that way, um, we tend not to have the issues that are at other schools. Um, we do have all of our students also cohorted into classes, and so they move together throughout the school day. Um, so our 7th graders move together, our 12th graders uh, will ultimately move together. Um, so there is the separation there. Um, and although we do things separately, we do have events for middle school students and for high school students. Sometimes we do like for them to have that mentor capability and we allow the older students to go and help out. Um, for instance, if we had the tailgate celebration, we had some of our older students go out and help sell the, the refreshments for the younger students or we, we couple them together for projects. The um, travel and tourism class, the 10th graders had, they recruited some of the 7th and 8th graders to be tour guides because they know they couldn't speak to the 7th grade teachers. So we keep them separate as far as their classes, but then there are times it's beneficial to have both levels on campus together because we can use that to their benefit. Garrett, come on up and tell us about electives. What electives do we have at QI? We did not prep these students. This is part of speaking and listening skills. Uh, hi there, I'm Garrett. Uh, <laughs> uh, this question is, uh, what electives are available? Well, there's multiple electives uh, available at uh, Cambridge or QI Roberts. Uh, there's art and design with Miss Beckles. She's our uh, art, art teacher. She does art and design, art. Uh, she does design technology. Design technology, and she does another one uh, in fashion, mm -hmm. I believe. And um, we also have band. We have jazz, uh, symphonic, and I think it was beginning. Like beginning. And then another one we have is. Um, and our drums and guitars. Yeah, and drums and all that. Um, and also we have um, agricultural, uh, uh, yeah, elective that uh, does uh, vet assistance, I want to say, and vet tech as well. And then we have business. Is it business or computer uh, using skills? And uh, I believe that's it, right? Or food. And food and nutrition, yeah. Um, you yeah. all love the cookies. Yes, they're very good. <laughs> they're very good. Uh, and we add, we add more every year mm -hmm. to get the kids accustomed to the school and so forth. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the clubs that I was in. Um, Cambridge, it tries its best to make the uh, experience in your high school, since you already have to be in high school, it's, you know, kind of um, mandatory to be in high school. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, uh, thinking on my feet here. But um, anyways, they're trying to make this experience as best as it can possibly be, and they do express that a lot during clubs. Um, like Garrett mentioned earlier, we have a bunch of clubs, um, and all of them uh, are really cool. Like for instance, I'm I'm in NHS, and we're making a or doing a service project to help an animal shelter, which is really cool. And um, we have like ping pong. I'm in ping pong. Uh, <laughs> and this is this is like. This is not ping pong like you think. They run around the table and play yeah, ping pong. And somehow there's 10 students playing ping pong and they don't hit each other. And it amazes me. It's really an amazing uh, yeah. <laughs> feat. You would not believe it until you saw it. <laughs> I'm, I'm a lot better at ping pong than I am at public speaking. So um, that's, that's for sure. Oh, uh, no, I can't zoom a dance. That's, a, that's another club that we have. But um, we, we do have a lot of clubs at QI and it does. Um, 
it makes my experience, and I'm, I'm sure it makes everybody's experience here a lot better and a lot more fun. Uh, and that, I just wanted to say that. So, thank you, Wesley. I just wanted to add. Oh. I just, want to, I just want to add something about bands. I'm not in band, but during the tour, I heard him talking to the students. And he said, even if you never picked up an instrument and you thought you wanted to play, he's willing to help you and help you progress to get better. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Um, kindergarten. Yes, kindergarten can, uh, does kindergarten, do kindergarten students need to write an essay? Um, certainly, they can tell you their thoughts. You can ask them certain questions. They can tell you their thoughts, and you can transcribe them as a parent. We are very happy if they can write their first name on their, on their application. I know they love that part. They love writing their first name on their application, and the parents normally transcribe the rest of it. Uh, we have not had any kindergarten students write their whole essay that I know about. Um, what kinds of field trips? Ooh, who's taking this one? Who's taking Miss Andy? Miss Andy, come on. Come on. Who's she bringing with her? Hmm. <laughs> Javen. Javen, come on. Um, the field trips we go on, all of our field trips kind of have a oppo or not opposite, a good purpose along with them. We went to Physics Day at Bush Gardens, and we learned about the roller coasters, and um, every well, we learned a lot of things about the roller coasters, which was fun. And then we got to go play at Bush Gardens, which was fun. It was fun. And then we tour a lot of colleges, which is still a good field trip because you get to explore your options. Do you want to share elementary? Um, we went, uh, we went on field trips to UNF and UF, as Ms. Wilhite said. And we just learned about how to get, how, how, um, Come on, just stand up there. Just how in high school everything starts to count and how they will accept you in the school. And just learn toward the school. Just with school. Thank you. Future experts. With a James A. Long shirt on, I recognize the James A. Long Disney. Come on, girls. Come on. These are elementary students. I want to share some experiences that they had. Go ahead. Um, last year, we went to Legoland. Um, <laughs> so you went to Legoland. How did you uh, relate that to your studies in the classroom? Did you have to write about it? We just want to have fun. <laughs> All right. Have you, have you been to any plays? Did you go see a lot of it? Y'all talked about that. Did you talk about the book versus the play? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how many students are there per classroom or grade level? Um, we limited our um, enrollment for QI. Um, we have about 80 to, we kind of bumped up seventh, we had, we had a particularly bright seventh grade class this year, um, but between, about between 80 and 120 um, each grade level um, to kind of keep it at a manageable rate there. Um, all of the um, class sizes in Florida are standardized by the state, um, and so uh, the classes will have typically between you know, 20 and 25 students in the classroom. Um, we do not have uniforms. Um, all schools in Putnam County have the same dress code. Do students already in Cambridge have to write another essay? Not unless you are moving schools. If you are moving schools, you need to apply again to the program. Uh, if you are moving to um, a new segment of the program at a new school. Uh, we had some transportation questions. Um, we are working with uh, Rodney Simons, our transportation director, uh, to uh, map out bus routes as early as physically possible this year um, so that we can try to accommodate the buses to QI. Uh, buses are just provided starting in seventh grade. Um, typically, there's some carpooling that may go on in the community um, for kindergarten through sixth grade. Um, um, I found when parents are able to kind of kind of talk to other parents, there's some there's some great carpools that um, that start to develop kindergarten through sixth grade, um, but we do provide transportation for seventh through twelfth uh, for throughout the school district. 
um, we've sort of addressed the electives. Um, student to teacher ratio is, is standardized by Florida. High school is uh, 1 to 25 in Florida. Middle school is 1 to 22. Um, the little ones are 1 to 18 in Florida. And um, that's standardized for all public schools in Florida. Um, do they have to reapply every year? Um, we did two separate um, processes this year. If your student is already in the program and they are staying at the same school, we needed them to um, hand in um, not an application, but an intent to stay in the program. And that's because we had such an interest, particularly at the elementary school level, we wanted to make sure we saved your student a spot if they were already in the program. Uh, and we knew that they were going to stay um, before we, we invited other students to apply for that spot. And if you did um, fill out one of the reservation forms, if your student is staying at the same school, you will not receive a letter of acceptance because that was your form saying, yes, I want to maintain my spot. And so when we receive that, yes, you're good to go. So don't expect that letter in the mail if it was one of the reservation forms. So if your student is in K through fifth and they're not going to be going to a different school, for instance, coming up to CeeLo, they were in fifth grade, they need to reapply to go to the new school, sixth grade, or to go out to QI. But if they're already in and they fill out the reservation form, then you will not receive um, a letter in the mail. You're just, you're good to go if you submitted that form. Um, and in terms of how many students we accept at each grade level, um, it, it's largely dependent upon um, the academic level of the students that apply for that grade level and the availability of resources of that particular school. Um, so the best thing to do as a parent is to just have your student apply um, at the elementary school level, it's not the end of the world if they get on a waiting list um, because of an availability issue. Um, but we try to accommodate as many students as we can, uh, given the resources that we have. We have an I Love Mommy from Jamila. Uh, all right. Um, how many college credits, credits do students get when they graduate from the program? Um, the college credit um, issue, they can earn, um, I've had students earn you know, their first two years of college at the university uh, with the Cambridge program. It's dependent upon um, how well they do on their exams. And so they'll take the course um, for college credit. They'll take courses starting in the 10th grade throughout 11th and 12th grade. And once they earn the college credit at the end of the course, um, they can um, you know, move that on to the university. So a lot of that's sort of dependent upon um, the courses that they choose in terms of their electives, and then they'll get it for their core courses. OK. Well, we invite you to uh, feel free to come on up if you have additional questions. We will also be sure to email you if you gave us your email address um, so that we can be sure we answered your question. And we thank you all for coming out tonight.